You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fun chat. Fireside, car side, drone side, wherever you are, we appreciate you. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Very grateful to be sitting here today next to Paul with you all out there. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate the uh, questions that you send in. Appreciate it when you uh, let us know what you think about the show through your reviews. Really appreciate when you subscribe, whether that's in, uh, in the Apple system, YouTube, all of it, any of it. It means a ton to us. And so thank you very much for that. Fun question today. This is actually something that I think you have on some level talked about from day one. Yeah, because it's very important. Hey guys, this is Earl from Falcon Eye Aerial Imaging in Temple, Texas. I provide mostly still photography and video services with my drones. Paul, I've noticed that you stress shooting video in Addy mode and not P mode. I currently use P-Mode, and I seem to be able to get the smooth and fluid movements that I need. I've tried shooting in Addy mode, but it seems more difficult to hold a position, especially if there's any wind. I'm wondering if I'm missing something by not using Addy that could possibly take my video to the next level. I appreciate you guys and everything you do for the community. Thanks so much. I think this is a great opportunity to kind of answer this question outside of shooting smooth video. The reason that every single pilot should learn how to master flight in attitude mode is because you cannot trust your sensors on the aircraft to always be right. It's essentially like learning how to be a real pilot, meaning you're actually in control of the aircraft. A lot of RC pilots have argued that drone pilots aren't real pilots because they have GPS mode. When they let off the sticks, nothing happens. Whereas with the RC plane or an RC helicopter, you can never, ever, ever let go of the sticks. Mm. That's just, that does not even compute. So, right. so <laughs> what, for a very solid reason, right? Because you can't, you can't always trust sensors to give you accurate information. And when you're learning to fly attitude mode, what you are doing is you are learning, you know, attitude mode is how we stop a flyaway. Attitude mode is how we take over control the aircraft if GPS is giving us erroneous data. Attitude mode is how we um, stop a crash from poor VPS information. Um, attitude mode is how we stop a crash when we're flying over water or highly reflective surfaces. And VPS is once again giving us bad information. In addition, attitude mode, like people I don't think have have really had a variety of opportunities of flying these drones to see why attitude mode is bad. If you're ever subject tracking something, you're chasing a car, your boat, your Jeep going up a mountain trail, okay, in GPS mode, no matter what happens, something bad could happen. What do I mean? Well, if you're tracking something and you're in the vehicle that's getting tracked and let's use the example of wakeboarding or wake surfing, right? If I'm trying to track a boat with a wakeboarder on it and I even move the stick slightly, if I'm talking the pitch stick, right? If I'm trying to pitch forward or pitch back, if I even let go of the stick slightly in GPS mode, that drone is now headed towards trouble as it floats towards the rider or whatever, if I'm tracking the boat for example, which means if I'm in a forward motion and I let go of the sticks, the drone is now moving away from me. Um, that could also mean when you're tracking or subject tracking wakeboarding, that if you're flying in GPS mode and you let go of the sticks or there's a temporary disconnect from the remote to the drone, now the drone stops moving in place and thus it's now an obstacle for the boat and the wakeboarder. Mm. Okay. Attitude mode is essentially like, you know, I don't want to toot our own horn here, but we've helped a lot of people become pilots. And some people have said some very nice things about us. And some of the things that they've said is the fact that drone you is the top gun of flight schools, hands down, no questions asked. Why? Because we require a higher level of pilot, especially in in-person training. And now that's virtual training. And now you're getting that with fl uh, flight operations, by the way, which we're having again in September. 
<sighs> people have said that we're like the top gun because we have we stick to a higher standard. That higher standard is circled around attitude mode because you can't stop a flyaway. You can't stop an emergency situation. You can't really fly the aircraft unless you can fly in attitude mode. And I think it's so important when you come to one of our flight mastery classes or flight operations and we go through the hover drill and we explain the six different ways to go through the hover drill and why it's so critical and imperative to learn attitude mode, right? It's not just for flying safe, smooth videos, okay? Uh, yes, it does help you do that. It helps you do that a lot. But here's the thing. Let's say you're practicing in P mode all the time. Let's say you're flying in GPS mode all the time and your drone starts operating in a way that you're not really familiar with and you have not taken the time over the last few years as you have been flying to practice in attitude mode. So as you fly more and more and more, the propensity for an accident goes up and up and up and up and up. It's hmm. called statistical analysis. Okay. Not to mention getting a little overconfident exactly. as time goes on. Which, by the way, the FAA talks about that in ADM and no one reads the ADM. So there's that. Anyway, long story short is you become more and more comfortable you haven't been practicing in attitude mode and today the KP index is seven. You don't even know what the KP index is because you've probably never been to a decent flight school. Uh, but the KP index is seven and you start to have a flyaway, right? You successfully stop the flyaway because you know that switching into attitude mode stops the flyaway. But there's also a 20 knot wind and the drone's pretty far from you. And you're not able to gather telemetry because your screen died. It's too hot. Okay, so now we have what we call the error chain. This is when errors rack up, right? Hot day, your stuff wasn't sitting in the shade because you're sitting here thinking about other things, mm -hmm. right? You switch the drone into attitude mode, but you can't figure out which direction it's heading. You can't figure out how to fly it or get it back to you because, well, you're just used to forward being forward and backwards being backwards. <laughs> okay. So well, the reason that I get upset with people and the reason that I have a high standard for pilots is because if you don't understand that you've got to be constantly practicing small incremental things to to just essentially prepare yourself for when problems do strike, right? It's kind of like the idea of your dad, thanks dad, and your brother-in-law, thanks Daniel, uh, <laughs> telling me to always have 10 grand saved up, right? You never know when it's going to be a rainy day or a rainy month or a rainy COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, so, so again, thanks dad yeah, and brother. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so that being said, it's kind of like the same analogy that if you're not saving for a rainy day and if you're not practicing attitude mode at a regular pace when you fly, then you're ultimately setting yourself up for failure when problems do arise, which is why I'm so adamant about teaching attitude mode. In fact, I'll never forget there was a firefighter from Anaheim County when we were training them, gosh, almost five years ago now. And uh, this guy was pissed. He was like, I am not flying in attitude mode. Like, you know, oh yeah. Like, I mean, fear-based? I would argue that most problems are fear or insecurity based, but I'm not here to lambast people and their emotions. We've all got to give each other grace. I'm just curious what was driving I, it. I, you, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> uh, but I mean, these guys, they sit there and they argue with you because they're, they're uncomfortable. They're afraid to try these things because they've been practicing and they have the confidence and you're like, but that's false confidence. Yeah, it's literally false confidence because you are relying on the fact that there's not water vapor in the atmosphere. You are relying that every GPS satellite is giving you accurate information. You're relying on the fact that you're not standing over rebar or some sort of ferromagnetically charged surface. And you're also relying that there's no multipath interference. And you're relying on the fact that you have done all your due diligence to make sure that you have negated every single potential problem for every single sensor on your aircraft not going to happen. Exactly. Well, let me just, you know, there have been a couple of people that I've been speaking to over the last few months with regard to flying in attitude mode. And what I find is incredibly common is that there's this, uh, there's just this inherent fear for some reason, because I think there's a, there's some comfort that the GPS brings. Right. And so what I don't understand is 
because there's comfort from GPS that doesn't have to equate to fear from non GPS. Yes, I agree. And and what I've found is that when I encourage people, because my, I went into it, and and I'm granted, I have the benefit of flying with you often, right? And so I can see that. <laughs> There's no reason to get worked up about it. So I just told myself at one point, and this is not tooting my own horn, but it is just where I'm coming from. Like, just go for it and go learn in the right place. Go to an open field where you're not going to hurt anything. You're not going to run it. And then you'll realize, wait a minute. Yes, the drone keeps going, but so what? Exactly. Pay attention. Exactly. <laughs> Stay on the sticks. Learn what wind bias is and how to stop it. <laughs> and how to use it to your advantage. Exactly. And so just get, just stop. <laughs> like, you come know, to the point and stop thinking about the fears associated with flying in attitude mode. Get over it and go fly in attitude mode. It's so funny that you bring this up. It reminds me of when Peter and I did the uh, subject tracking course down in Phoenix, Arizona, and or north of Phoenix, Arizona. And it reminds me of a student the very first day. I mean, Rob, this guy was like angry mad. He, he was like, I can't fly in attitude mode. If I fly in attitude mode, something's going to happen and I'm going to lose the drone. And literally Peter and Peter and I looked at each other and smiled. We Both could, East Coasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look out. So he literally, <laughs> we're like, oh, oh, you, oh, really? Okay, well, here we go. So, so, anyway, so Peter goes, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. If you can't afford to lose that drone, get the off the boat <laughs> literally <laughs> and i was like yeah peter yeah boy and and mind you peter is such a patient teacher he also will literally get on the phone with rob and be like like right after cussing someone out he'll be like oh uh yes sir um definitely yeah yes ma'am i i will definitely do that like he knows how to like talk to people oh, but yeah, he does he also he does. understands that we are our own worst enemy and it's okay to push yourself out of your comfort zone. So he literally said what he said, and I'm sitting there like, I'm like, okay, you went way more aggressive than I would have gone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm over here like, hold on a minute. I'm like, Peter is right, but the way that Peter said it is probably not the best way of saying it. So let's just, let's, let's take a step back. Peter is 100% right, sir, that if you cannot afford to lose that aircraft, you should definitely not be on this boat, 100%. Now, that also means that you just insured your aircraft, right? Because if you lose the thing and it's insured, you're getting a new one. You don't have to literally pay for the entire drone again. Or if you have uh, DJI Care Plus, which is even better than insurance in my opinion. Anyway, long story short is I told the guy, I was like, ultimately, he is he an asshole? Yes. Is he right? <laughs> yes, he is right. And sir, you need to stop thinking what if, what if, what if, what if. Because guess what, man? If you're thinking about what if, you are not thinking about how to avoid the problems. And as soon as you start thinking about what if, what if happens because you made what if happen yeah. because you're not focusing your mental energy on what you're doing. You're focusing on what could go wrong. And as soon as you start thinking about what can go wrong, guess what? It's going to go wrong. Absolutely. Piloting I, I is not that... for weak minded people. It's not. That also means most, in my opinion, most people I feel like do not believe in their, themselves to a level that they should. So for anyone listening to this, be like, oh man, I, I don't believe in myself. Maybe I'm not a pilot. Well, start believing in yourself. Hold yourself accountable. The bridge between what you want and your dreams is discipline. And I have to say that to myself every morning, every morning. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, but also good things don't happen to lazy people. Seriously. Yeah. And I think that along the lines of what Peter was saying to him when he said, if you're worried about losing the drone, get out of here. Um, what's the point of having it? What's what's the point? If you're going this. to live in that paradigm, just don't buy it in the first place. Save the money. Go do something else. So another important you breakthrough. Exactly. And another important lesson and exactly what Rob was just saying is like, if you bought the drone, then there must have been some sort of belief that you are capable of being a pilot. So take it and run with it. Right. Yeah. But just know that if you act on emotion, just like the stock market, you are going to get slaughtered. Okay. You've got to be prepared because information is the way forward beyond fear. Yeah. And, and you are capable. How many people Agreed. 
have we seen at the in-person flight mastery classes break through in a day? Yes. They started the day with that fear, and by the end of the day, they're flying the obstacle course in attitude mode, mm-hmm. and a whole world opens up to them. It's mm-hmm. amazing. It really is amazing. I, and that's one thing I really miss about in-person yeah. trainings is witnessing a total intellectual transformation. Mm-hmm. And it's probably one of my favorite things to do because there was a guy in the drone industry who helped me do that a long time ago. And I can't tell you how much... I, it's probably one of the few reasons I keep keep working here at Drone U is because I genuinely love helping the people who help themselves. I genuinely love watching people who doubt themselves and, 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 and question themselves and show them like, here's the intellectual hack and I'm going to prove it to you. So you prove it to yourself so that this is no longer an obstacle for you because you need to move on from this. And... <sighs> That is one of the things I'm grateful for is the ability to even do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, it's yes, there have been tremendous benefits discovered through the virtual trainings, but there is uh, there's something pretty cool about the in-person stuff as well. So. Yeah. We'll get back to those as well. Well, and I will say too, just really quick before we end the show, we are having virtual trainings. The Mapping Bootcamp is uh, September, I want to say 8th through 12th. Uh, we are doing operations the week after that, and we're also doing interactive the week after that. There are a lot of pros to these virtual classes, right? Being able to watch you fly through gates is not one of them. But where we don't have that ability, we do have the ability for you to essentially see the screen, the telemetry, the drone information. You're able to see multi-camera information information. So it's a truly interactive experience. And not only that, I would argue, Rob, well, I'm writing an article about this right now, that virtual classes might actually be better for certain types of learners. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, let me put it to you with this one analogy. Every flight mastery or mapping boot camp, I'm showing people setting up their drone and I'm typically kneeling down with an iPad and everyone's looking over my shoulder on that iPad, right? Really awkward position for me, but I'm trying to get as many people to see the screen as possible. Mm-hmm. Maybe six or seven people see the screen. Of those six or seven, who knows to what detail they're seeing the screen? And now with these virtual classes, it's now boom, 1080 or 1920 by 1080. And, it, you know, you are seeing every setting, every, you know, specific piece of nuanced information so you're not missing a beat Mm -hmm. and um that's i would say that that's one thing that's really empowered me in doing these virtual classes is is that and also the social interaction and on top of the mapping classes the people who sign up for those are people that take it seriously that's kind of why it's my favorite class to teach because you get the most serious people yeah for sure for sure um as far as the virtual stuff, not to mention having the the replay to go back and watch yeah. all that stuff again with, in a very detailed way. Oh, yeah. So. And the seven extra hours of class on top of that, there are advanced resources that they get to. So. Yeah. But. Anyways, great stuff. So I, I, I hope that answered Earl's questions because we kind of just jumped right in. And But again, we really, really would love for you to go and uh, let the world know what you think of the show through your, uh, your review. And uh, also, when you subscribe, wherever you listen or watch, it helps tremendously. So we would appreciate that. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you again, everyone. We appreciate you. And uh, Rob, appreciate you. So thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. (laughs) 